Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jalen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 84, Calls by Quarter Hour. All right, so Mike sent me this one, and um, I'm going to rename this from Dueling Podcast to Watching a Guy Do a Lot of Things That Doesn't Work. Uh, the deal is we have a whole log of call, calls here. We want to figure out how many calls came in every quarter hour. Well, hey, pivot table, right? Insert, pivot table. Okay. I want to put calls received in row labels, and I want to group that up to quarter hour. Oh, shoot. When I go to hours, there is no way to say quarter hours. If I would go to just days, I could say three days, seven days. Um, but when I choose just minutes, see, there is no number of minutes or number of hours. So eh, not going to work. All right, let's go back. I'm going to do a little bit of math here in the sheet. We need to know how many quarter hours there are in a day. Well, there are 24 hours in a day. There are four quarter hours. Uh, so that is 24 times 4, 96. And you know, a day is equal to the number 1. It's stored as 24 hours as 1. So if I take uh, plus 1 divided by, whoops, plus 1 divided by 96, that is the fractional portion that I wanted. And initially I thought, well, hey, let's try equal M round of this uh, into that decimal. Press F4 to lock it down. Uh, but that round. So 257 rounds up to 3 o'clock and uh, 637 rounds back to 630. That's not exactly what he was asking for. He's looking for quarter hour period. So let's try this. Equal um, this time divided by that little tiny decimal. Press F4 there. And I need to uh, take the int of that. So how many times does that little fraction, that quarter of an hour, fall into that time, and uh, that is formatted incorrectly. We then have to multiply it after we take the integer to get rid of the decimal portion. Multiply it back by that number, F4, and see that always backs us back to the previous quarter hour. So even if we're almost up to 259.59, it's going back to 245. So I'm going to call this when, and I'm going to add something here called count, and count is just simple. It's one, double click to shoot it down, make sure that I have a blank row there above my headings and insert pivot table OK. Let's bring the field list over so you can see it. We're going to have uh, when going down the left hand side count in some values and there we go by every single quarter hour how many calls came in. All right Mike let's see what you have. Thanks Mr. Excel. Man I love the pivot table. I tried the exact same thing. Tried to group the times couldn't do it. So I love your helper columns to get the pivot table because pivot tables are so easy to create. So of course I tried to group the times and couldn't get it to work so I said okay I'll default to formulas. Now here I have a column of times here and if I'm going to uh, count do, using some formula I'm going to just choose to do an upper and a lower time and then count between those. Alright so I'm going to come back over here. If I do that if I have a column of times, in order to create enough categories, I need to figure out what the max and min time is. Now, I'm going to use this column here a lot of times throughout these formulas, so I'm going to name it. I'm going to click in the label, Control Shift Down Arrow, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F3. That names, that's going to name this column, whatever's in the first cell there. I click OK. If I click just in the times and Control Shift Down Arrow, I can see the time there, or I can go up to formulas name manager and I can see sure enough it is created. Now I can use that name throughout all my formulas. All right, I got to make sure I have enough categories so I'm going to go max and I'm going to say C. Notice there's a dog tag there and I can see it in blue so all I have to do is hit tab. Equals M I N C tab. Enter. The start time, I'm looking well, I need enough categories to to cover almost to midnight and about 12 noon 18. So I'm going to start at noon 12 colon 00 space p.m. and the increment. Now I love the way Mr. Excel did. It. He just did 12 times 4. Here's how I did. It. I said equals. Well, I know time is a proportion between 0 and 1, so 24 hours is 1. So I'm going to divide that by 24. And then I need quarter hours, so or every 15 minutes. So I said divide by 4. And then I looked at said, well, I don't want to leave it like that. And to reduce the fraction, I need to multiply the top part of the fraction and the lower part by 24. So that would leave me with this in the denominator. I didn't know how to do that. 
multiplication uh, in my head. So I simply highlighted it and hit the F9 key, which is evaluate. And boom, I can leave that hard coded in there. That is 15 minutes as a proportion of one 24-hour day. All right. Now, when creating categories, if you look back over here, notice we're going to have a 1215 and a 1215 here. So you have to be careful. I'm going to just say I'm going to include the lower time, but not the upper. That way I won't double count anywhere. So I'm going to equals that cell tab to get the lower, and then equal this one plus my increment and F4 to lock it. Now I can copy that down. And here I'm always going to go equals one cell up and over. right? So those two formulas I can copy down. And those will give me my categories. Now I could have just typed the times in and increment. Whoops. Now notice I went too far here. If I hit the delete key, that just deletes the content, Control-Z. So what I really want to do is home clear all, that clears content and formatting. Keyboard shortcut in 2007 is Alt-H-E-A, Control-Z. I still remember the old one. And since both are three letters long keyboard, I still use the old one, Alt-E-A-A. -A. I actually have those listed up here. All right, so we have our categories. Now, again, when I do my counting over here, I'm going to include, I'm going to say, uh, greater than or equal to 12 PM, but less than 12 uh, 15. All right, if you're in 2007 and 10, you can use count ifs, criteria range C tab, comma, in double quotes, we're going to say greater than or equal to, because we want to include the lower, and double quotes, and then join symbol ampersand there. Okay, what's so nice about this function? You have criteria range one, criteria one, comma, criteria range two, C tab, because we've named it comma, and then I don't want to include the lower one, so I just put a less than symbol. And that formula in 2007 will work all the way down. Double click and send it down. The defined names are also locked, which is helpful in this situation. All right, what about 2003 and before? Well, we're going to have to kind of back into it. I'm going to build a form that says count all of the ones that are less than 1215. If I say less than, it won't include that one. And I'm going to count all those and then subtract the um, count if again, but less than this one. That's when, that's when we get down here, we'll say the logic will be count all the values less than 115, so that won't be included, minus all the ones less than 1 p p.m. Because we're saying less than 1 p.m., the 1 p.m. will be included in this category. So it's two count ifs. And the criteria is going to be less than in both cases. I'm going to say the bigger one, count less than all of the bigger ones, minus count if, count if, if only I could type, down arrow tab, whoops. If only I could type, so count if. And then the, the range is C. Comma, and it's still less than. Remember, we're going to say less than the lower, but that'll include the lower here. All right, so double click and send that down. And so uh, there's 2003 and earlier, 2007 and later. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. Alt E A A, I still do that. The Experimental Aircraft Association to uh, clear all cells. I love the count ifs with two different conditions on the same column. I've always done it where I look at column A is something and column B is something to replace the sum product, but that's a great use. Learn something every week with these. Well, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel, and Excel is fun.